Hi everyone, welcome to Kids Love Comics, How to Draw Everyday Animals as Silly Cartoon Characters on Baltimore Comic Con Live. I'm Jay Robert Deans, children's book writer and artist, and the creator of Shakes the Cow, and Stanley the Bear from Ant, and a range of other series which you see on the screen. Now, I'm generally known for drawing cows and penguins, koalas, and panda bears, as well as a whole bunch of other animals that you see on the screen, but I don't draw them like this. I normally draw them as caricatures. A caricature is when you take a drawing, or actually a picture of someone or something that is real, like this cow, and exaggerate certain elements of its features and make it more comical. For example, if you had an uncle with a really big nose, you would draw a picture of your uncle and really make that nose huge. That's a caricature. It's, it's a picture of somebody where certain features are just made really ridiculous. And when I made Shakes the Cow, what I was doing was making a caricature of a cow. So that the pictures of Shakes in the children's books and the picture books I do of Shakes would be funny. Or hopefully funny. So what I've done for Shakes, when I created Shakes, that for the design, you have, well, a picture of a real cow. And you'll notice that the head shape is sort of, there's a hexagon, and then a, a slightly larger nose and mouth at the end of the, of the head. So I took that slightly larger mouth and really made it big, so for that big pink snout. And then instead of making keeping with the hexagonal shape of the rest of the head, I just made it sort of almost a sausage shape. And I did leave the ears sort of normal, without the black coloring, of course, and gave her centered eyes more in keeping with cartoons like Bugs Bunny and, and Mickey Mouse and things like that. And when I designed the body, I exaggerated some things, simplified some others. Because when you're doing a caricature, you're not only exaggerating certain things that stand out, like, for example, the nose on the cow, but you're simplifying other aspects of that thing that you're drawing, which add to the exaggeration of what the other aspects are. For example, if your uncle had a big nose, but really tiny ears... Not only would you exaggerate the nose, you might even oversimplify the ears to really highlight the exaggeration of the nose. And so what I did for Shakes, now Shakes only stands like a real cow in one picture in the first book she appears in, Moo Thousand and Pun. The rest of the time she stands on two legs, like humans. But I left her hind legs, if you will, shaped like normal cow legs. They have that really large tapered thigh leading down into the hoof. But her arms, if you will, the forearms, uh, are more like other cartoon animals. They're slim cylinders, or they're, you know, like uh, human arms. There's, the, again, that design of the head, which is slim, but with the really large snout, onto a sleek, almost, uh, well, I guess her body really kind of looks like a squeeze bottle, uh, like for ketchup or something. It's because of the snout. It looks like the, the collar of a bottle, and it's a very slim uh, figure. Now, you'll notice that the hooves I've designed are longer and slightly slender, because Shakes doesn't have hands. Uh, being a cow, she's going to have hooves, and I made it so that those hooves look a little bit like fists. But I never draw anything to show that she could have fingers. She's always got hooves. There's never any sort of uh, finger element like in some cartoons. But I also never change what she might be using to give her a the appearance of adaptability of those objects. Like when she drives a car, the steering wheel isn't adapted to hooves. It's just a normal steering wheel. So here we have the side of, of Shakes's body, and it highlights the fact that I've changed her arms to be more like normal cartoon character or human arms. The shoulders are slender, and the arms are pretty much straightforward, just cylinders. But 
I don't over ex, uh, overemphasize the side of the snout. It's still pretty big. And when you see it on the toys that we sell, it's pretty big. But from the side, it doesn't look too bad. But you can see how different it looks from the the way a real cow's face would look or a real cow's head would look. The ears are normal, but the snout is not. And you've got that hexagonal shape. And then, But if you look at the side of a real cow's face and head, they don't look anything similar to each other at all. And that's where some of the exaggeration would come in. Now, if you wanted to create your own exaggeration or caricature of a cow, you could totally take it a different way, where you could keep that large snout appearance, but maybe draw it in a totally different way, where you bring in the sides of the head, as opposed to pushing them out like in a normal cow. Do it something like this. The cow, the tongue sticking out is just for goofy effect. But see, you've got that large nose, the sides of the head are brought in, but it's clearly a cow. And that's caricature. Once you have your caricature figured out, your design figured out, you can bring it to life through motion in your cartoon. And in real life, such as in this quick image of someone walking, it's pretty standard. And in comics, you want to give it even more life. You want to make it a little over the top. This comics character that's walking, they're leaning forward a little bit, the leg is slightly bent, the arms are out. It looks a little more dynamic. Here's this character running, and it looks like we all do when we're running. But in comics, running characters always look like they're about to jump out of the page running after you. That kind of dynamism is what separates comics from just normal life and while thing action in real life is intense you have to make it even more so in comics to really have it jump off the page you have to exaggerate it and that exaggeration is what helps sells your story now up top i've quickly drawn what a cow might look like walking normally well, Shakes walks on two legs. So that is enough of an exaggeration that I don't feel the need to give it anything else. I don't need to push the envelope or make it sort of even more goofy or exaggerated than it is. But when I draw Shakes running, that's when I really go nuts. And that's where it's a lot of fun to have animals be really goofy when they run. Because if they're walking on two legs, they're going to look even sillier when they're running. And here you can see Shakes looks really silly when she runs because her legs really pump. They get really high in the air. The tail starts flying. Uh, in fact, her hooves almost touch in the back there. Her eyes get really wide. She's hauling and she's just going. That is definitely over the top. And not just because it's a cow running on two legs. And it looks silly. And that's something you should always keep in mind when you're drawing your comics and your characters. Don't be afraid to have your stuff look kind of silly. Because that's sometimes the best stuff that's out there to read. The goofier the stuff looks, the sillier it is, and the, the more fun your audience is going to have with your artwork. At least that's how I always do. So let's try this again with a different perspective, and that is with Shake's eyes. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that Shake's doesn't have a mouth. Well, she has a mouth, but I don't draw it. Now, here's Shake's slightly from the side, and in the, sometimes from this angle, I do draw a little bit of a mouth. But I'm only drawing this for effect, because normally I do most of, if not all, of Shake's acting with her eyes. And that's something you can also do to really sell your character, sell the emotion of what your, your story is doing 
with your character. Notice the really the different size of the eyes. They really get big. Shakes is surprised. Not, not, not sure what she's surprised about, but even then the mouth isn't really necessary. And here in the side view, big eyes. Don't need the mouth to, to know that she is, again, surprised. By what? We don't know. But clearly something's up. And using the eyes to sell this uh, sense of emotion, you can do it one of two ways. You can have really big eyes to show that Shakes is angry. Or any character. Your character. That the character is angry, intense, or possibly even afraid of something or worried about something. It's all about how you draw the eyes or the eyebrows. Now, I can do this also with Shakes' normal eyes, the, the little small eyes on the far left there in the, in the first head. Interested or confused, angry, or just there. Those are the regular eyes, and the bigger eyes are the exaggerations. But they all can show the same emotion. But the more exaggerated you make it, the more over the top you make it, the bigger you're selling the emotion, the bigger you're selling your story. And again, with no mouth, at least on my character, at least with shakes, with no visible mouth, all of that acting has to take place with her eyes and sometimes her body language. And so you always want to practice drawing those eyes, drawing arms and, and how you place the arms and legs. Sometimes I will draw a mouth, but you'll notice I don't draw it over the top. Because, again, it's a cow talking. That's a weird enough situation in and of itself. And when I do draw the mouth, Shakes is either yawning or laughing really loud. And that's when you get to see something like this. Big old cow mouth. <clears throat> and then every so often, I will draw Shake smiling, because that's always fun to draw a character smiling, because you know they're happy. And a happy character is a fun character to draw. And the more you can draw a fun character like that, that's always cool. At least I think so. Here we have a quick sketch of Shakespeare's best friend. Do you know what Shakespeare's best friend is? Well, here's a drawing of Shake what Shakespeare's best friend would look like in the real world. Does this help? How about now? That's a penguin, if you haven't figured it out already. And to those of you who have, well done. Let's try it again with a different animal. Or maybe a different version of that same animal. If you said snake, very good. It's a specific kind of snake. It's a cobra with the funny markings on the back of its hood. And one more thing we'll try, which is we will just doodle something that you might see on the looking outside of your window. Okay, this one's probably obvious. Now this little exercise is to pardon the pun, illustrate a point. That's a tree that you see outside of your window pretty much every day, right? That's also a tree. 
It's not as elaborate, but it's a tree. That penguin, that snake, and that tree, whichever one you're looking at, they're all perfectly good pictures of a penguin, a snake, and a tree. And that brings up my point. So I don't just have one point to this video, but really four things for you to remember, in fact. Number one is don't worry about being exact. Mistakes are going to happen. I make mistakes all the time. Let them happen and learn from them. Just remember to always do the best you can and your art will get better with practice. In fact, that's a good life lesson in general. Number two, make your art and your story as silly as you want. The sillier the story, the more enjoyable it'll be for you to create. Because really, you're making the story for yourself, and you are your most demanding reader. Number three, you're telling a story. You're not trying to impress an art critic. Don't worry about trying to draw the most perfect animal or thing. Just draw well enough to get your story across. Everything else will fall into place. I promise. Okay? And the fourth thing, have fun with your art. This is the most important takeaway because the more fun you have drawing and creating, the more you will want to draw and the better you'll get and the more people will want to read your stories. In fact, we at Kids Love Comics love seeing fan art and any art in general, so be sure to send it to us. We'd love to see it. Thank you so much for watching this Kids Love Comics How to Draw presentation. I'm J. Robert Deans. You can find me at jrobertdeans.com. There are links to all my stuff there. And please stay tuned all weekend for other great Kids Love Comics creators, and we hope you've enjoyed this presentation once more. And please stay safe. Thanks again. Take care.